Yo, what's up everybody? It's boy Jed here and welcome back to a brand new video. And you already know we talk about a lot of different games here on the channel. Some a bit on the weirder side, some a bit on the darker side. You know, we we talk about games here, that's what we do. We like to play games over here. And today is no different. The game we're gonna be looking at today is my friend Pedro. Let's talk about it, shall we? <laughs> My friend Pedro, Bloods, Bullets, Bananas is a 2019 shoot 'em up game developed by Dead Toast and published by Devolver Digital. The people who published Cult of the Lamb, Return to Monkey Island, Inscription, Katana Zero, and the Gungeon, and much, much more. It's based on a Flash game of the same name published by Adult Swim Games titled MFP, My Friend Pedro. And just like the game it's based on, this game is really fucking strange. Like, just the description of the game alone, which is what infatuated me so much because how absurd it was, reads, and I quote, by the way, My friend Pedro is a violent ballet about friendship, imagination, and one man's struggle to obliterate anyone in his path at the behest of a sentient banana. There's a little bit more to it that follows that reads the strategic use of split aiming, slow motion, and the old stylish window breach create one sensational action sequence after another in an explosive battle through the violent underworld. But the part that caught my eye was the very first part, and this craziness of the very sound of it all extends even to the trailer. Just just watch it, man. I expect it to rise by 69 degrees. <laughs> So, for today's recipe, you'll first need a well-sharpened knife, but also a big frying pan. Let it cook over an open fire. Yeah, when I told you the crazy nix extended to the trailer, I fucking meant it, lad. Now, contrary to what it may seem, this game does have a story, and while short, it's a bit of a mindfuck, namely near the end. So let's talk about it. Story. The game starts with you being woken up by Pedro, the sentient banana. You find yourself woken up in a butcher shop owned by a man named Mitch, and you learn from Pedro that he's an arms dealer and that he needs to be eliminated. You go level by level and eventually escape on a motorcycle, which leads to a motorcycle chase with Mitch chasing you in his truck so you have to kill him and get him off your trail. You do so and decide to head to District Null, an abandoned community project to lay low for a bit and take a load off. You do so and run into a bunch of bounty hunters having a party, however as soon as you pass by them, their leader Denny arrives and reveals that you are their new bounty, so then they start doing what they do, hunting you down to get your bounty. You decide to wake your mate at Denny's office and when you get there, he freaks out and flees the building, jumping onto an aircraft, but before doing so, reveals that his sister Ophelia has taken control of the internet. With Denny on the aircraft, you run down the buildings and make your way to the bottom floor, where Denny tries to kill you with the aircraft, but you shoot it down, causing him to jump off, so you chase after him. Eventually, you catch up to him, and though you try to kill him, he seems to recognize you despite the mask on your face, which seems odd, but before he can say any more, he goes crashing into a building, killing him. And Pedro decides that this would be a good chance to take you to his world for a bit. You get out of there and head through the sewers to confront Ophelia while traversing the sewers. You run into these military guys called the ISPs, or Internet Service Protectors. Yeah. <laughs> 
After escaping the sewers and jumping onto the train, heading to the internet, you learn the train seems to be carrying supplies for Ophelia and the ISPs. You take the train to the internet, and Ophelia uses this as a chance to test you. However, as you progress, she seems to recognize you from your movements more and more. And Pedro starts acting a bit off and pushy, telling you not to listen to her and that she's just getting nervous. When you reach her, she tells you that she can't let you go on, despite how shitty her father, Mitch, and her brother, Denny, were. And after you beat her, she reveals that you were none other than her brother. And it's here where Pedro reveals that he wasn't being 100% truthful and tells you that you were one of their family members but you disagreed with their schemes. You came to him for help because you couldn't take them down alone. So you put your mask on, knock yourself out, and break your memories. He then says he has one thing left to do if you ask him to and shoves himself into your ear trying to get you to shoot yourself. But you will resist the earth as a giant Pedro approaches from the background, transitioning into a giant final fight against Pedro. After beating him, you wake up and stare into the setting sun for taking off your mask, which reveals that you were Pedro all along, and that the sentient banana that will flow with you throughout your journey was nothing more than a figment of your imagination. Roll credits! Yeah, when I told you this game was a mindfuck, lad, I meant it from the very start. The fact that you're being told what to do by a sentient floating banana to trippy ass sections of Pedro's world, to the plot twist that you were one of Venture's children and the bosses you killed with your family, to Pedro pulling an LTG and saying, Kill yourself! I mean that with a hundred percent, with a thousand percent. To the trippy as boss fight, which is meant to be a representation of you resisting Pedro's influence. To the even trippier plot twist that you were Pedro all along. This game is something else, man. But now that we're done talking about the story, let's talk about the rest of the game, shall we? Gameplay. You get a bunch of different weapons at your disposal that you get more and more as you play. You start with a pistol, and then a second so you can dual wield them. You get a shotgun, a pair of SMGs, an assault rifle with a grenade launcher, and a sniper rifle. You can split aim to shoot multiple targets at once, so long as you're using either the dual pistols or the dual SMGs. Or if you're using one of the pistols or one of the SMGs, if you hit the dual wield button or the split aim button, you could then use both of them. It'll pull both of them out so you can do a wheel because you know the same weapon. You have bullet time, which make, which slows down time and makes it easier to make more precise movements. And uses up the focus meter, and you can get more by shooting more enemies. You can also press L1 to dodge bullets. The levels can have some very elaborate puzzles, especially near the end, which can get extremely challenging, especially this level of the internet. It's so fucking annoying. The boxes are fun and interesting. You have an array of weapons to use and environmental ways to kill dudes. Like flattening a dude within a bear with a barrel, blowing up a gasoline tank near someone, getting a basketball into their head, and many more. There are also some pretty sick trick shots you can pull off, like kicking this frying pan and shooting it at to keep up in the air, causing the bullets to ricochet and kill the enemies. It's so much fun pulling these off and getting them. This game is great at making you feel like a fucking badass. Also, Throughout the levels, you'll find these little yellow things called game modifiers, and there are 13 of them. Some of which include infinite ammo, which as the name implies gives you infinite ammo, cinematic focus camera, which gives the camera a more cinematic look when you enter bullet time, and it looks fucking gorgeous, and big heads, which turns your head into a massive fucking hot air balloon, and it looks fucking hilarious. I love it. Each of them do a different thing, and it's pretty cool. Also, this game's music kicks ass. Just listen to some of this.
Yeah. The music in this game fucks, dude. This shit is awesome. But without that out of the way, I think we should get on to wrapping up this video. In conclusion. This game is weird and trippy, but it's also fucking badass. And especially when compared to its early base as a Flash game. Yeah, talk about one hell of an evolution. There's also a free-to-play mobile spin-off called My Friend Pedro Ripe for Revenge. And maybe I'll talk about that one day. That I thought this game was great and I had a blast going through it, especially the final boss, which is actually pretty difficult. But if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't, you can tell me how much I suck as both the YouTuber and the VTuber in the comment section down below. Anyways, I'm gonna stop wasting your time. Peace out and enjoy yourself.